all should look like the same thing that we talked about inside on the cutaway model. Here's our flow line coming with the, the oil being pumped out. Here's our gas line that ties into it. It's a uh, the flow line that goes to the battery. This line is for this oil only. bringing water from the, the tank back over to the annulus of the well and putting it down the outside. And then we can shoot fluid levels on here and determine where our water level is. 685 feet. The well's 4,000 feet deep. The volume of this well, the case, that 95H casing with that tubing in it, has about the same capacity as one of those tanks. So once we go underground, we go to polyethylene pipe. On top of the ground where we got steel pipe, it's wrapped where it goes in the ground. That's for corrosion purposes. This is a caliche pad that's been placed down. And so caliche and steel, very corrosive. Don't mix well. So up above the ground, we still get some rust not bad, but if we go in the ground, we gotta go with some coating or protection. Polyethylene, we laid it all the way across to the pad. <clears throat> Let's go over to the gas well. Okay, this is a 5,000 PSI wellhead. This is like what you would see on a gas well or a high pressure flowing well. This one is not an actual well. That piece of pipe is six feet long. So we got three strings of casing. That's what? pressure gets too low, it'll shut in. Why are we worried about pressure too low? Huh? Reverse flow. <laughs> we're, we're producing along at a thousand PSI every day and then all of a sudden it drops to 20. You got a line leak. Yeah. You got a, you got a leak in your pipe line somewhere. Farmer plowed it up, whatever. So that would shut the well in and keep that flow from going. So that's a high low pressure. You see that if you don't want to, if the somebody closed the valve over at the separator, 
that pressure is going to back up all the way on you. You don't want that either. So if it gets too high, you shut in. So that's a high lung shut in. Get too cold. Look at the tables. That's right. <laughs> you gotta look at that chart he keeps talking about, right? Is it outside the hydrate formage point? If it's inside there, we've choked it too much, we gotta do something else. But if we can open it up and we stay where we're not gonna form hydrates, we can choke at the wellhead. Okay, we're gonna double back out of their way and go to the header on the battery and come back and pick this up, okay? Tell you one other thing we're doing with OTC. This is a field test of a uh, explosive limit detector. And we tested uh, several of these earlier, and then they wanted to put a model out, see how well it held up in the weather. And so that kind of Jake legged looking thing is just a field test of how well this is holding up. It's transmitting signals back into a Wi Fi system that we can pick up. We'll shoot it every now and then with some methane see if it's still picking up gas so that's a field test don't look for anything like this on a tank battery <laughs> huh what is that okay it's a manifold or what's another name for it a header Okay, here we got any, if we have common ownership, we can put wells together for production, right? Yeah. So we got three wells on this lease. If I want to test one of these wells, this is where I can divert the well to test, or I can put all the wells into production. One of these is a test line coming out of the header, one of them is a production line, which is which? How did, well look, don't guess. Okay, so this is going to be... When you get out in the field, some of the older batteries especially, you guys are going to have to figure it out. There's no drawing, there's no prints. The guy that put it in retired 20 years ago. You gotta, you're gonna have to look at where does the line come from, where does it go, and how, how do I handle it? Okay, if I wanna divert a well, I've got number one here. I wanna divert it to test. How would I set the valves? How good is my test going to be? I don't know. No. Good, 
No. That one's open. No. So what, what else do we have to do? You have to close this yeah. one, too. Okay, we'll you have to make close it one way. Ones. You have to close that one. And then you have to... No, 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 you, you open it first. Oh, test then. is right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, okay. This looks like this. Yeah. So you'd have to open this first. And, then and this is already closed, so now you're good, right? Everybody agree with that? Huh? Which one's going to test? This one. Okay. And which one's going to production? These two. Okay. So then is this the correct setting? That's all production. That's all production. That's okay. Everything can be going to production. Yeah. Why do we test the well? Let's see how much we're doing. Yeah, because Water we have to do it for regulatory purposes. <laughs> Some of you are going to be reservoir engineers. The reservoir engineers always need data. They want to know how much well the, the production is making. What about if one of the wells has high pressure and the other one, like here, everything can mix? Right. Go back, so if they're approximately equal, we can bring them all together, and the check valves will keep backflow from going back the other way. Should these two have check valves as well? Yeah, they they'll, have on their below? lines, they'll okay. have check valves. I just had to wait till I got number two and number three in before I <laughs> yeah. shut the header. Fair enough. So those would be complete wells, too. So we test the wells. All right, let's, let's assume we got everything going through production now. Let's follow the production stream. I got two boats. I got one for up there and one for down here. Here's our back pressure regulator. Remember? So this pressure regulator, we set it for the pressure that we want. Notice this line ties all the vessels together. The gas from all of the vessels get together. Yeah. Okay, so what determines the pressure in this gas line? Sales. Sales does. So where we're tied up over there at the end of the sales meter is the gas plant. We, everything we have has to be at high enough pressure to get in that gas sales line. So this vessel will have the highest pressure of any in the, in the battery because it's the first one in. It's got to be high enough to dump to the water knockout, to the treater, and then get to sales. So this is the highest operating pressure that we'll see. It's stamped with a working pressure on it, and that's one of the things you need to note. 125. Okay, and there's another pressure on this. This is one of the lines that's been pressured up. How much pressure is on this treater? Okay, guys, something else. Yeah, y'all yeah. let me get out here without my safety glasses. I just put on, so that's when you have time for a safety conversation. It's time to get them. You didn't bring yours? We'll wait for you go get it.
said they won't get over his glasses. <laughs> get hugs and they come. We're waiting on you. Let's go, Sean. <laughs> Okay, so we've got <coughs> this this pressure, there's a pressure on this vessel right now. How much is it? Huh? No? Oh, that's a word. Ten. Ten. Yeah, okay, this this vessel has a pressure gauge in it. <coughs> Right here, and it's open. This valve open. When I, it says it's got 10 psi. Does it really got 10 psi? Yes, it really does. And you can't dump it out, can you? Why? Because the fl the float is down. There's not enough. Yeah. Room. There's another the reason. The pressure is really bad. I guess it's 10 psi around the valve facility. If I I could I could open it up and it should go out right there, shouldn't it? Yeah. Why is it not? It's 10 psi all the way. Look at the plumbing. Oh, it's it's closed. Closed. Yeah, the valve's closed. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gotta look. Valves. Okay, so th this this valve is closed. So I anything I do here, even though I'm moving that float up and actuating the valve, doesn't do any good. So I've got that pressure trapped. If I had opened this up, it would start equalizing across the other vessel. Okay, so here we we've opened up. Oh, by the way, this valve is manufactured by a company called Kimray. This valve is manufactured by a company called Kimray. But if you ever ask uh, somebody in the field to go adjust the back pressure, you, they go adjust the Kimray. And normally, they're referring to that valve down there. That's just a, a generic. The generic is a back pressure. Kimray has so much of the market that it's almost what everybody it's universally uses. Yes. But this is a Kimray valve too. It's manufactured by Kimray. It just happens to be a dump valve, not a back pressure. Okay, so now we've dumped our fluid over to the free water knockout. Let's go over here. Okay, so the, the, the production came from the separator. We've taken a lot of the gas off, but we still have a gas uh, blanket on top of here, so we've got to take some more. Anytime we drop the pressure going from one vessel to the next, more gas will be liberated. It'll come out anytime we take that pressure drop. This is where the emulsion comes out. So how does this valve open? You two guys, hey, how does this one open? Okay, where, where's the actuator? No. Pretty simple. Okay, we're taking gas pressure off that line up there. Bring it down to the float. And as that float opens or closes, it allows pressure to come on the diaphragm of the dump valve. When it opens enough for that gas, it'll go to the valve, and the oil will dump out and go to where? Yeah, it goes to the heater treater from here. So this gas will regulate this valve, and there's our side glass. We can see in there where the level is. Okay, the water dumps out down here. We got the sight glasses again to tell us where the liquid levels are in the vessel. Here's that midway plate, so what else would be in here? Uh, you said there's, there's a valve, you said hey, there's a float. There's a float in here. Okay. So this works just like the other one. So open this one. How did it open? This is open here. It's open. That's because it's got a huge ball in it that's partially weighted. And they're 
kind of calibrated to the density of the fluid that you have, but it takes more uh, pressure to let the dust kind of melt out. And it's over. Notice this is a big three-inch line. Water goes down, ties it to the line, it goes to the water tanks. Oh, Mr. Blood, one question. Yeah. So uh, we send the, the oil to the uh, heater treater. Right. Okay. So we can have some oil in our bottle also that it is equivalent to separate it or just we dump it. Yeah, if it, if it separates out of here, we usually dump it. We don't generally so find enough the the oil to carry over in water. Okay. Not usually, but you can. That's the water. Okay, where does the fluid go in the treater? Go touch somebody go touch a line where the fluid goes in the treater. We'll get out. Where does the fluid go in the treater? Which line? This one right there at the top. The on the left with the yellow on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right there you go. Okay. So that's where it goes in. Where does the gas come out? The top. So, yeah, the gas comes out here. Here's our pressure regulator again. Notice how much smaller it is now? Yeah. There's not near There's as much less. gas coming off of here. And then what's this line that I got my hand oil. on? This is the oil dump. There's that column of oil. It's got to get up there before it comes down. And then when that hydrostatic head is straight enough, it opens. it'll open this valve right here. This can be counterweighted to help adjust the level. And notice here the pressure coming off the gas system that's equalizing the pressure on here. So we've equalized the gas pressure and we're only working with the hydrostatic heat. Same thing here on the water side over there. So this line comes off the gas, goes over here to a small scrubber, and this is where we're taking the fuel gas for the burner. It then goes through a regulator to drop the pressure, and then the gas can come on in here go through this. This is tied over here to a thermometer. The thermometer reads what the temperature is that we want on the treater, right up there. This is a thermocouple. So the thermocouple regulates how much gas opens up to go into the burner, which is located right here. What's that small part in the back with the other valve? <laughs> this right here? Yeah. That's taking the gas to a pilot in this particular one that leaves a small flame burning all the time. So when this kicks it on, it'll start it up. The burner is only turned on when you're actually needing to heat up. Like the pilot's always on. Right? In this one, yes. So you always keep that one open. Well, right yeah. now it's closed, but usually yeah, you, you, would, you would keep it open. Okay. In the summertime, you will get enough natural heat to, to break. And then as it gets colder and colder, they start turning these on and they can see the the effect at the gas plant like millions of cubic feet a day yeah. being burned up to treat the oil <laughs> this is called a flame arrester that prevents that flame from uh, contacting hopefully a uh, gas that would be loose they, these got to be kept real clean so and then this is a fire eye where you can watch and see the flame in a real fire eye would detect the flame if it was where it wasn't supposed to be and shut things down. So you've got enclosures and so on. Okay, so we've got everything through the treater. The water comes off over here. There's that water leg. This pipe goes up inside that bigger diameter pipe up there. in with the line and went to the water tank. There's my check valve to keep it from coming back at me. Okay, gas went over here.
go to the gas meter. The oil is not a good enough treatment on it right now. Down in the Permian Basin right now, they're having trouble with what's called reed vapor pressure. Anybody heard of that? Okay, reed vapor pressure is how volatile the oil is. And the pipelines were turning down the oil because there was too much gas in it. So the operators, they had to do this down in Eagleford and then here in the Permian, they put up these vapor recovery towers. And dump it in. This vessel operates in atmospheric. the piping and goes to the oil tank. So this oil ought to be less volatile now. The gas came off here. Okay, this is the vapor recovery unit, VRU. Okay, so what was the working pressure of the atmospheric on the vapor recovery tower? What's the working pressure of a tank? Huh? These tanks? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very low, like one psi they may be rated at. We don't want any more than like a few ounces of pressure on it. So our gas that comes off the top of the tank ties in with the gas that came off our vapor recovery tower. We bring it through this scrubber, get the last bit of liquid off of it. stage compressor that pumps it up, presses it up, into the gas sales line, and then we can sell it too. Where does the liquid go? The liquid that comes out of the scrubber would be tied to a little circulating pump, mm -hmm. and the circulating pump would take it back somewhere where it could get pumped in the system again. Okay, Mr. Blunt. Into there or, or straight into your tanks? Uh, I probably want to put it through the system. Oh, or, so that in case there's water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the, the gas was that was liberated from our vertical okay, is a lot richer than the gas over here. Okay, do we just sell them the same? Yeah. What's MAWP? M. What? Okay. What Maximum. is it? MWAP. Maximum. Maximum allowable no. working pressure. Okay. Uh, what, what did you say the pressure is for the VRU? Okay, the VRU will take the pressure off of that and there, and it's going to be an ounces of pressure, like four ounces of pressure. That's going to be the suction. So it's less than one. Yeah. The discharge will be at whatever is dictated by our line sales. It's the first one. MAWP. Okay, so that's the MAWP of the scrubber. Oh. The compressor. Oops. And that's the only thing that's stamped is the, the scrubber so on this. The actual pressure is whatever the sales line pressure is. So when we talk What's about... The the sales line? Line. What's the maximum? What's it's the maximum? It's by your sales contract. Okay. It's generally going to be in the range of 50 PSI or something. It, it, the contract may say 100. You'll probably run 50 and the day they jack it up to 75, you'll go, say, day you raise my line pressure and he says, it's in the contract, I can do that. And that happens when there gets to be too much gas. Okay, so let's take the sails all the way through the gas meter. <laughs> okay, so we haven't talked about orifice meters yet. flows across it, we record the pressure upstream and downstream, we get a differential pressure. This will be in terms of inches of water. Orifice plate's just got that small hole in the
is our back pressure valve. And this time I've turned it around to hold back pressure on my system. So I'm charging my system up and hold that there and that'll represent the gas plant. And then we can back up the pressure and draw the others all the way to the cross. And this would be the point where it would go in the ground and we'd sell the gas. Adam, huh? Do they ever put like an O2 analyzer? You might have to. Gas. Right. Before yeah, those impurities that we talk yeah. about are in a gas stream. Yeah, you might have to have an O2 analyzer on gas. Okay, we sold the gas. The water and oil went to tanks from the vessel. Let's go look at the test separator. Okay, what kind of vessel is this? It's a what? Three-phase separator. And it's low pressure, three-phase separator. We're using it to test a given well. Notice before, how do we know how much fluid went through the production system? We don't know till we sell it, right? With this, we can take a single well stream, run it in here, Gas will go out the top. There's our line going to the gas sales line. Here's our oil dump that'll be tied into the oil line. And here's our water dump that'll be tied into the water. Uh, water dump goes to water, oil goes to oil. When it dumps, this valve will open. And here is a turbine meter. What's a turbine meter? Yeah, it looks yeah. It's like a turbine. So it's it's got the blades in there. Each rotation is a discrete quantity of oil of, or of water. And as it turns, this electronics counts how many turns it made. We know the volume, so we get a rate in barrels per day and a cumulative volume that's gone through there. So we open this up, we reset the meter. 24 hours later, we come back and read, you know, how much oil did we produce in 24 hours? That's our well test. This is where we take samples to do all the PVT analysis, all like that. So when you take a PVT analysis, it'll say separator sample or wellhead sample, and you'll know the temperature, 50 degrees. <laughs> you'll know the temperature, the pressure uh, at the separator. You gotta know where it's measured and how much it is. Questions about test vessel? How accurate are the turbine ones? Uh, they're within a percent usually. Why don't you use like a magnetic, magnetic resonance one? Or something? I can I can put the most expensive meter on there I want to. So I've got to determine what level of accuracy I need. Okay. Yeah, I could put a Coriolis meter on there. For this is that's about eight hundred dollars worth right there. This is one of the things we'll automate where we could read it from a remote location. I'd have to come out here to look at it. <laughs> So this is about $800. A Coriolis is going to be um, probably a two or three thousand dollar hookup. So what level of accuracy do I want? Okay. So right behind you is the water pump. These two tanks that we're looking at are the water tanks. When we pump the water out, we're going either to the disposal well or a disposal system, right? pump out of these tanks and send it back over. How much water is in that tank right there? Right over here on the right. No, I know what it holds. How much is in it? So how would I find out how much fluid is in there? I could go up there with a tape, yeah, a dipstick or a tape, and lower it in there and read it. Or I could look at this right here. Condensation. This is what this looks like on the inside. This is a head switch. 
So on the head switch, I've calibrated this to read how many feet of water are in this tank. I know the diameter, I can get a volume, right? So right now we're reading just about two feet of water in the tank. And notice the outlet is up off the bottom of the tank too, so I've got to account for that, and that's done in the calibration. But then this is a diaphragm that's hooked right here. And as the water pressure increases on the diaphragm, it's an indication of the tank level going up. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Wish you'd thought of that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lot of money. These, when I first went out in the oil field, this is exactly what we were using and they're still using them. The nice thing about these too is that they can be set. And so as the fluid level increases, these are wired to the pump. And if I set my pump on automatic, when the fluid level gets up to say six feet, it'll Turn kick on. the pump on. And then it'll leave the pump running until it gets down to two feet, and then it'll turn it off. And we're going to find out why that's important to turn it off before we uh, start damaging the pump when we talk about pumps. We'll learn about cavitation and net positive suction head and all those things required. So this can be done automatically. This saves climbing up on the tank. If I really want to get accurate, I've got to, you know, strap it and tape it. But this is a quick indicator and a way to control fluid levels in tanks. Okay? What's it called? Head. head switch. Generically, they're a head switch. The, the company's name used to be Major, and it, it's again like the Kimray valve. They go check, check the Major switch, Major head switch. And now they're made by Wellmark Chemical. Wellmark. Wellmark Chemical. Okay, so that's how we get the water out of the tanks and back to where we want to go. How do we get oil out of a tank? How do you sell it? Truck. Okay, we can truck it out or... Yeah. You know, you may truck it out, but it actually goes to pipeline. Or you truck can, it to the nearest pipeline. Yeah. Or the other way to sell it is what? Black unit. L-A-C-T stands for? Lease acquisition custody transfer. Least automatic close. custody transfer. Okay, close. <laughs> okay, let's go over and look at a lack unit. See this. contract we're going to have a, a BS and W requirement to meet we're going to have to have other impurities out of it the lack unit is going to measure the quantity of oil that we're selling and it'll measure the quality so this is tied to the bottom of the tank it comes in here to a pump then we pump it up and we go past right here this is a probe and with that probe it's going to take a measurement of the BS and W if the oil is good, it'll go through the system to right here. And this sampler will open and it'll let a few ounces of fluid go through for every barrel into our sample tank. We've got good oil, so we'll go through this valve, then to the meter. This is called an A.O. Smith meter. And it's a positive displacement too, just like the turbine meter, but it's got like four or five veins that open and recorded the uh, rate to go through here. It goes on down through this piping, through maybe a pressure regulator, and then to the pipeline. And your oil is sold. What happens if the, wa if the uh, water content is too high? Yeah, so here's, here's what we do now. It went past here and said, whoop, bad oil. Well, bad oil's coming gets to the sampler and says, don't take a sample. Don't want that in the sample pot, pot for the pipeline company to check. Got bad oil, so when it gets to this valve, it turns and diverts the flow this way, and there's a line going back to where? Where's it go, Stephanie? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Heater treater. Heater treater. Went to the heater treater, didn't it? Yeah. So we'd, we'd either take it to a bad oil tank where we can run it later and clean it up, clean it up, or we can take it back to the heater treater. Now, what do you got to be careful about? You got your heater treater. You got your production going through there. Now you're going to end up with another stream of oil running it low. So you got to work it back to some way to retreat it where it comes back through here again to go. The only other thing that uh, we'll talk about on the lack unit. If you open that cabinet, it's got connections on it where they can back up a trailer that will have a fixed volume that will flow through. It'll close this valve off in the middle so that flow has to go out through that fixed volume and back in here. From that, they'll say if the meter read on the barrel and the volume I measured through my calibrated loop measured one barrel. My correction factor is one, everything's good. But if only recorded nine tenths of a barrel going through the primer loop, my rate one is going to start putting a correction factor on this one. Pipeline's not going to pay me for that short barrel I'm given. And on the other hand, if it's greater than one, I'm uh, I'm getting cheated. So they'll calibrate the meter on a fixed basis. The less oil you sell, frequent you check it there's not a hard and fast rule it probably be regulated by the pipeline company you have a contract with sell a lot of oil you want to check it once a month not selling much oil once a quarter but you have a calibration procedure to go through to make sure this is accurate this is the cash register everybody watches this closely there's a lack unit back over here in the back part of the pad that is sealed you can see all the seals that are put on there I can't just come up here with a pipe wrench and fix things I've got to break a number of seals. The pipeline company's got to be there, witness it, know what we're doing. Okay, questions on a lack? Okay, we're going to go pick back up to where we got gas. Yeah. Okay, what is this? Okay, this kind of way of a line heater. You can open it up and look at the coils inside. Could, no, does any separ separation, this is where water and oil and gas get separated? We haven't separated anything yet. So this is just for the purpose of heating it? This is just for the purpose of heating the well stream. Okay. Generally it's going to be on a gas well. working pressure stamped on there is there? No. Okay, let's talk about working pressure. This comes from the well head. Notice how thick the flanges are. How many bolt holes they got through them. Remember that little one we saw with four? This has got what? Eight? eight. One, two, three, four, five. How thick yeah. they are. This is a high pressure flange. So this is our inlet coming into the line heater. And the purpose of the line heater is what? Separate. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. combating hydrate formation. You're looking at the charts. Okay, so this is the choke, just like we looked at inside, except now the choke body is right here. The end of it is right here. So it's a single pass? This one makes a single pass. It comes in. If we looked at that pipe, we could trace it. It'll go through here. What's sitting inside of this shell? Water. At what kind of temperature? Okay, so it's going to be, we want it under 212 for sure, right? We don't want to boil it. So 180 to 200, somewhere in there, we'll heat this up. That, and you can fill it up right there at that lid. You don't have a cutaway of a line heater in. That water bath, there's a 
fire tube that runs the entire length of the vessel. The tip of it is right here if you can't see it. That red thing, it runs all the way back down. So why is this pitted? This is the reason it's on display and not, it's got a, I think right there on the plate in front of you, it says for display only or something like that. This is badly corroded. This is what happens when you don't take care of your chemical treatment. This is pitted from corrosion. This is what corrosion looks like. They use sacrificial anodes. They could use anodes in there. They could treat chemical treatment. And so, yeah. You open this up, it ought to look like this pipe right here. Okay, so we made a pass. Our gas line now comes through here. Now I can choke it. This is going to tell me how many 64 of an inch of choke I've got open. I can regulate the flow. The heat of the tip of the choke is all the way inside the water bath. It stays warm. So it's going to put enough heat in there for, I, for me to choke it. Then after I choke it, it goes out of the choke makes some water passes out and then comes back out and goes to the rest of the system. So I'm adding enough heat here. If I take additional pressure drops through separators or whatever else I've got downstream, I've added that heat there to melt the hydro. So what's the working pressure of this vessel? Because the pipe pressure. Huh? Because it did the pressure the pipe and stand. Yeah, that's what's important in it. This shell can't take Well, I'll get in there where you can see it. Here's the coil. So here's the size. It says it's a 2XXH. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? 2XX heavy. Double X. Double two two extra, double, double extra heavy pipe. It's got a square footage area of 9.9 .9 square feet. And it's got a maximum pressure of 6,500. So that's that first pass coil. It's rated at 6,500 PSI. And all those things he calculated, the square footage required, the pressure it had to, to withhold. The second coils are only two inch X heavy. And those have an area of about, looks like 32.3 square feet. And they're rated to 3,440 PSI. So in the, in the line heater, it's not important about the shell, it's important what, what those tubes can take side where you're passing the gas. This skid was designed to go on a well testing situation where you got a well producing raw fluids out and you need to know how much oil, water, and gas you've got. And it's going to be a high pressure flowing well. This has a much higher operating pressure on it, but it works the same way as our other three phase separators. So we've got an inlet for the gas. And then somebody tell me where the oil and water come out. Water comes out on the other side of this. Water what, and how water do you know out. that? Water out. <laughs> okay, trace the pipe. Find out where the oil and water come out.
Okay, and Trey said for the five and three. Hey, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you all right? Watch out. Okay. From this way, this is the water, so. Water comes up at the bottom. Right. So the only thing that's, that's a little different on this is, see, they come out at equal places, yeah. so you can't tell where the so buckets are on these. probably a bucket up here for the oil. Yeah. And how would we know that then? Well, you, you got you to have a schematic of the, of the vessel. 